one and everybody. Good to have you on the program today. So I finished my lore video for tomorrow, and uh, I finished it early, and so I've got some time to kill. So I figured I would be productive and capture some footage for next week's content. I'll probably have another impromptu Twitch live stream tomorrow, um, in uh, where I'll do some more of this. <clears throat> but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, play a little bit of Ellen Elaine War, and then. If I get this done, if I get enough footage captured, then uh, we'll go ahead and do some Fallout 2. Uh, now, um, before I give a spoiler warning, let me make sure as many people are in the chat as possible so I don't have to give it a, again. One second. Oh, there it went. So the plan is to get through the final vice desk case. Now because it's the final vice desk case, it's a huge turning point for the plot of Velle Noir. So spoiler alert, <laughs> um, a lot of the story is about to really kind of come to a head in this case. So if you'd prefer to wait until I finish my lore video on the topic, you may not want to watch this broadcast. Um, but if you're not following along or you already know it or whatever, feel free to, to join us. As I said earlier, the, the goal is to get through the case Manifest Destiny today. And then if I have enough time, maybe we'll do some Fallout 2. Okay. The final Vice case. Wow, I only got three stars on the Naked City. Must have been all the damage I did to the car. <laughs> all right, let's do Manifest Destiny. Here we go. Uh, let's ride over the setup. Since we've already done that one. Clark, with a subscription at Tier 1. Thank you very much, Clark. Jareth says, Ox, it's almost midnight here. Why are you working so late? And also, hi. Um, I just put the kids to bed. I wanted, I wanted to get the kids to bed first before I did a two hour long live stream. Whoops, did you see Earl, that? Phelps. We had characters hovering in the air. Uh, the geometry didn't load, so we gotta restart. All right, let's see if this works. Please, no floating men. There we go, that's better. Earl Phelps, a shooting at the 111 Club, 6232 Hollywood Boulevard. Sounds like a homicide beef. Two of the dead guys caught in the crossfire were carrying army surplus morphine. Get over there before homicide tramples all over the place. We already cleared that up. Judge in Pasadena took the big sleep yesterday. He had a personal stash of 20 cigarettes. Appears we didn't get all of it. Man, if Roy would just stop oh, arguing with his superior officer, I, I think we'd all again. be a lot happier. 
<clears throat> Smooth Man Manatee says, do you like L.A. Noir so far, Ox? I do. I mean, I finished the game already. This is my second playthrough. I wanted to beat the game first before I did a lore series on it. And now I'm going through with a guide to make sure I get absolutely everything. Ryan says, hey, Ox, how's God the recording damn. going? This can't seem to put this morphine to sleep. A dead judge. It's not good. Everyone has their vices. Even you, Phelps. Can you read a stack some papers? Oh, really? Yeah, okay. Anyway, the recording has care. just started. I don't go in for letting gangsters off scot free. All right, we need to go to the 111 Club. Big Al says this winter is making me wish for a stint patrolling the Mojave. I'm freezing my boots off. It is really cold. I've got my window open because I'm smoking, but I'm wrapped up in layers. I have my pants. I've got two shirts on, and I've got my robe on over me, and I'm wearing a scarf. <laughs> I'm cold. I'm cold. memorize your name and throw my head away. Bay Manager hey, says, hey, Ox, one love the vids, and do you think you'll play The Outer Worlds? I absolutely will play The Outer Worlds, and when it is released, we'll cover it here on my channel. Can you drive to this one? Dane says, holy crumb, Zox, you need some grooming. Parker and Green are going toe-to-toe -to -toe for the top job. There's a change in the wind. About time. This wind will be like a tornado, Phelps. Parker's got a puritanical streak. You never know we'll get swept up in a thing like that. I have excellent grooming. Thank you. It's just a haircut. I need a haircut. My hair is a little long. That's all. Homicide guys are already inside. Laura says, salutations, good Sir Oxhorn. Bukowski. Salutations, Laura. Phelps, back again. We're here about the morphine. Over by the bandstand. You can see what's left of the owner, Eddie McGoldrick, 26, former Marine. I know Eddie McGoldrick. He was a non-com in my old unit. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Cole. The waitress said he recently came into some money and bought the club. Who are the other Vicks? Ooh. Two musicians, Biddleston and Bo. And get this, they used to be in a four-piece, but the trombone player and the drummer OD'd. Don't tell we me. We met them. Mont and Tyree. We've met the rest of the band. Now they're a no-piece. <laughs> Do you mind if we All take right. a look around? Be my guest. This guy. You might want a word with the hostess, too. I'll keep her company until you're ready. Now they're a no-piece? You, you moron, Roy. <laughs> All right, um, the cool thing about playing this game a second time is I get references that I missed the first time. All right, uh, let's uh, inspect this body here. Marker A. Must have pumped a dozen rounds into him. Certainly sends a message. Uh, Black Tusk Morta says, even in Ox, don't know how long I'll be able to stay, but I'm glad I'm catching some of tonight's stream. I'm glad that you're here. <clears throat> Dane Geld says, love your work, didn't need to insult on the grooming, just, you know, you need a trim. Yeah, I, I know, I need a trim. I'll, uh, I'll get a trim. Maybe, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, okay, so pump full of lead. <clears throat> we can't inspect that corpse. Catch all the good ones, uh, I remember exploring this place for a long time. When you're ready to have a civil conversation, we can try again. Really? I didn't think uh, Blakowski was one of those guys that didn't have civil conversations. That's marker B, or that's marker C, there's marker B. <clears throat> Well-maintained, custom case. Someone cared for this instrument. This is weird for me because I used to play the trumpet in high school. What's that click? Another day, another dollar. Ah. Neat trick. 
case must have cost more than the trumpet. We've got a broken syringe, a bunch of needles, a rubber band, a spoon, and a ticket to the blue room. We should follow up on the musician angle. Catch all the good ones, Phelps. Big Al says, I watched episodes one through six of L.A. Noir today. <clears throat> good man. You got a lot more episodes to watch. We're well through the game. We're well over halfway through the game. All right. What else can I interact with? Looks like I got the syringe. He kept his stash close at hand. Yes, he did. Complete with needles you can exchange. My goodness. Is that it? Just those two things? Yeah. All right, looks like that's it for the suitcase. Let's go to evidence. Ooh, look, it's still swaying. Wow. Oh, look at the bullet holes in the wall. All right, let's, let's go to evidence marker C. Just when I think I've seen it all. Chris Strando says, uh, Hey, Ox, I just beat L.A. Noir today. I was inspired to play because of you. Now I'm catching up on all the videos I missed. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, it's a worthy game, you know? It has its uh, plot holes, and I'll talk about those in a separate video, but it's uh, it's still a really worthy game. Oh, come on, that's not what I did. I want to go the other hand. Brief nudge. There we go. Nope. All right, looks like we're doing inner suit jacket pocket. Nathan Pennard is in the chat. He says they need to give this game another chance. Nathan, it's so good to see you, man. Those of you may remember that Nathan... Uh, have a new source. Nathan Pennard and I used to... left in circulation. ...do musical. He used to do the uh, background scores to my old World of Warcraft videos. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, X Ecliptical says, Hey, Ox, what's that other detective game? Um, well, there's one more. Okay, so, okay, so after L.A. Noir, I'm considering doing a series on the return of the Obra Dinn. It's, it's, a, it's an unusual game, but I played through it, and it's so compelling. It's short, so it'll be a short series. It won't be quite as long as L.A. Noir, but it's a kind of detective theme, so I'm waiting until I finish L.A. Noir to kind of consider doing that. But I'm really con uh, compelled to do it. That's it, that's it. Okay. Another day, another dollar. Do you prefer third or pers uh, first person games? Says Sergeant Dornan. I prefer first person games. Oh, hello, what's this? Well, well, well. The Valor Tobacco Company. A dozen packs to a carton. A hundred cartons or more. Looks like a couple of months' supply. Wasaki Master says, Oh, oh no, Ox, how long have you been streaming? Because I feel like I've missed a lot. I just started. This is the very beginning of the case Manifest Destiny, so you haven't missed much. So, why do they have an entire crate filled with cartons, huge, huge cases of uh, cigarettes. For resale, maybe? Or are they stolen? And what is this? These look brand new. Never fired. They haven't been degreased yet. We could check on the serial numbers. Is this guy hunting for bear? Look at these things. They're BARs. You get the odd guy who sneaks one of them home from the war. How did he get three of them? Hmm. Army surplus morphine, army surplus weapons, army surplus valors. Sound familiar? 
We should get back to the station and check the details of what exactly was lifted from that ship. Oh. So we're all three part of the, uh, the ship robbery? Looks that way. Big Al says, Oxhorn, please tell me you're better at driving in real life than you are in L.A. Noir. Uh, I am. <clears throat> but my brother picks on me all the time for being... He, say, he, says I, I, he says I drive carefully, like, like an old man. He, he calls me an old man driver. Uh, I, I do drive carefully. I'm not a big speed demon. But that doesn't mean I don't get where I'm going. Can I look at any of these portraits? Nope. All right. Someone lost a cap. Oops, already did that. Uh, let's talk with the hostess. Looks like Bukowski is already there. Ma'am, I'm Detective Phelps, administrative by squad. Welcome to the 111 Club, Detective. Feels like I've had half the LAPD in here today already. Okay, let's see. Right. Interview time. 111 Club shooting. Big Al says, to be fair, it would be hard to drive worse than you do in the game. Any idea who did the shooting? No idea. It was my day off. If I had been here, honey, I'd be full of holes just like the others. Hmm. I'm not mad at Big Al. No, Big Al is just giving me a hard time. I deserve it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, looking at her body posture, she's bored. She's tired. Is that just because she's had half of the LAPD in today? Or could it be because she's not telling the whole story? Or maybe she's not telling the whole story because she's already told it and she's just irritated. We'll wait until she gives us a little uh, sarcasm here, and then we'll continue on. So for those new to the program, I have to sit here and wait. This how you usually solve a crime? Uh, wait for it there. That's what I was waiting for. So now we'll doubt. You want to level with me, miss, before we start taking an interest in you? This place has been on the slide for years. Eddie turns up, buys the club, then we start getting visits from tough guys. Next thing you know, we have the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Are you getting the picture? Man, she is not a happy miss, uh, a happy missy. You must be just be really tired. All right. Big Al says, I kid you out of love. I have nothing but respect, Oxhorn. I know, Big Al. I know. Next up, knowledge of McGoldrick. I believe this was supposed to be the guy whom Cole knew. Someone he went to war with. Tell us about Eddie. Eddie didn't know a thing about running a nightclub. He came into some money and waltzed in and bought the place. The previous owner thought all his Christmases had come at once. Mm. <laughs> Allegro says, oh, I miss Oxhorn and Rafflemau. Well, Oxhorn is here, and Rafflemau is always online, my friend. Hey, thank you for subscribing, Acidic Sentinel. Good to have you here. Man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a Fallout 2 stream like I had intended. This uh, rum and coke is uh, <clears throat> tiring me. But we've got a long case to get through. 
<clears throat> this particular case manifests this destiny. This how you usually solve a crime? Is a long case. The setup, which I published a few days ago, that was an hour and 20 minutes when I got through it. All right. Truth. Where do you think you got the money? My guess was that he was selling the sort of quality product that you don't need to advertise. Thank you for your help, ma'am. Eddie was in over his head, but he was a decent boss. A two-parter? Oh, man, I don't know. I kind of like the idea of having a fully encapsulated case. Okay, so we got everything we need from the Club 111. We the one of the mainly uh, one of the main only clue we got, not the only clue, but one of the main clues we got was the Blue Room ticket. So let's head to the Blue Room. See if we can find some more jazz musicians who might have a secret stash of morphine. Sergeant Dornan says we need that Fallout 2 footage, lad. I know I need to capture more footage so that I can. Oh. Another day, another dollar. Almost Bad missed luck, this completely. Eh? Okinawa couldn't kill you, but knowing the wrong people in this city. All right, so this is Eddie. Uh, I'll have to splice it in <clears throat> at the beginning. Funny Goose says, OMG, first time seeing Oxhorn without a hat. <laughs> Nothing in the hands. Okay, so that's why the guy didn't say anything about this. No clues here. Bad luck, Eddie, indeed. All right. Okay, we got an open safe here. Hello. They didn't even try to crack the safe. But it was cracked. But the money's still here, okay? So we've got a pistol, some money. It's all still here. Hmm. So we're in this corner. Can't look at any of that. Nope. All right, to the blue room. Welcome new subscriber, Dane Geld. I want to see... Officer, I want to see. I'm sure you do want to see. Nosy. To the blue room. Oh, what's going on over there? You're behind the wheel. Where are we going? Dan Geld says, actually, I have subscribed before. It just periodically unsubs. Interesting. Well, good to have you back. I recognize that guy from the papers. He's a cop. Elza Lich Lichtman. See him? And her famous jazz quartet. Inside we go. Coat check, can't talk with them. Take a break, boys. We would like them to stay, Miss Lickman. We're making inquiries into the recent deaths of four musicians. Since when have the police cared about dead black men? Good point. We don't. What we what? care about is two tons of army surplus morphine showing up on the street. If you care about working in this town, you better give me something on Biddleston and Bo. Or their knucklehead buddies, Tyree and Lamont. And this is your idea of making inquiries, Understunfura? 
I've told you a thousand times about speaking that German gibberish at me, Elsa. Roy! How about you get a drink while I see to this? He's already hit her once in this series. If you recall, it was our very first... Down? No, it was like our third homicide case or something like that. Why antagonize him, Elsa? You know what he's capable of. Ask your questions, head officer. We have work to do. All right. Hair officer. feel like I'm playing Wolfenstein. We'll start by asking her about the army surplus morphine. People are dying of overdoses. If you know anything about it, you need to tell me. I can't help you. A lot of cats are into the thing. There's nothing special about your boys. Jareth says Phelps stood up to him this time. Interesting. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's he's, he's developing backbone. Or, I mean, I think he's had back, backbone. What I think it is is that Roy took him by surprise. I don't think he expected Roy to hit anyone, let alone a woman, inside a nightclub the first time. But he came in this time ready. <laughs> and so he jumped between the two. Laura says Roy needs Cole to give him a good backhand. Yes, he does. All right. Let's wait for her to do her side comment. Okay. I got all of her questions wrong when I did this the last time in my first game gameplay. So do something. Don't just stand it all day. It's going to be interesting working through the logic of why I was so wrong the first time I played this. Jared says, yeah, but he didn't say anything after that. It's true. All right. This we will doubt. You can do this the easy way with me, or I can call my partner back over. I can assure you he's a lot less sensitive. You think your threats frighten me? Black man don't supply nothing. You think there's a black man in this town holding on to two tons of morphine? He'd be dead in a minute. White man supplies, black man buys. Okay. Really confused. Things are going out of order for me. To my memory. I mean, I haven't played in... Like six or seven months, so. Okay, morphine overdose victims. My partner mentioned a couple of names. You recognize them? I have no idea what you're talking about. She is really not being helpful. Gonna need a little bit more bad cop for Elsa here. Acid Sentinel says, do you have any suggestions for new games for others to try? <clears throat> I, I wish I did. Uh, my knowledge of um, games, especially modern games, is limited. I honestly don't have a lot of time to try new things. But the return of Oberdin is really interesting. I'll probably do a lore series on that. Um, Frostpunk is fun. I played that a little bit. I streamed it on this channel a while ago. Man, she looks like she's about to break down to tears. Something is bothering Elsa. Do something. Don't just stand it all day. Commander Fox <clears throat> says, Oxhorn, are you interested in the new Metro game coming out next week? Metro Exodus, I am indeed. Looking forward to streaming it on this program. We will doubt. The only way you're going to get rid of me is to give me an answer. I knew Cornell. We worked together a few years ago. He loved the music, but the music didn't love him. What does that mean? It means that he just wasn't that good. He was a sad, lonely cat. Boys, take five minutes, please. I need to have a private word with your officer. Why do you ask people to risk talking about a subject that could have them jailed? Drugs are against the law, Elsa. And you're so full of courage, you have never felt ashamed. 
This is getting us nowhere. Do you think you'll win your war against narcotics? It's not my war. It's against the law. My job is to prosecute the laws of this city. Do you think you can stop people from needing drugs, detective? I'm asking the questions here. Then why do you come to me with your stupid questions? You know who controls the drugs in this city. It's not enough to just survive, Elsa. You have to try and make the world a better place. Brave words. Very noble. But... Words are just words, cold feathers. She's right. We need to pay a visit to the mixer. Cohen, do you know where to find him? This time of day? You'll find him holding court at the Macambo. He can wait. There's something I need to be sure of. Give me till tomorrow morning. Don't do anything I wouldn't do, partner. This part confuses me. The entire thing confuses me. So we have an extended cutscene here. He's clearly struggling with something. Internal turmoil. Sorry, I gotta concentrate when it comes to driving. Shit! But it doesn't help. <laughs> My concentration doesn't help. I'm right here. I can't move it any closer. I'm in the middle of the road. Like she's not going to notice him pull right up there. Yeah, this part of the game I just don't get. I don't get what he's trying to do. I don't get what signals. See, when I played this last time, because I got all the questions wrong, I thought I must have missed something in the interview. But having got all the questions right, it's not explaining why Cole does this at all. It's creepy. It's weird. He tails her home. What signal did she give him that none of us saw? I hate everything about this part of the game. No, 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 no. Welcome to your new life, Cole. Welcome to your new life. LAPD, we're looking for Mayor Cohen. I believe he has lunch here. There's not going to be any trouble, is there? Which table? Number three, if you'll follow me. And they put it in such a weird spot. <clears throat> they need Mickey Cohen. Cole says, do you know where he's at? Roy says, yeah, around this time, he's going to be at the Mumbo like Club or whatever. Sir, and so he says, oh, okay. Mr. Cohen's table is this way. I'm going to leave for 24 hours. Let's do this again in the LAPD. morning. LAPD. 
We have some questions. Hi, regarding... Mickey. How's it hanging? Fine. Just fine, Roy. I see you brought Iga Beva along. Hope he's not going to put the shakes on me again. Cole Phelps. Mickey Cohen. Good afternoon. <laughs> he has manners. Aren't you a little green for this kid? Me, Johnny Stompanato, Cole. He has the biggest schlong in Hollywood and the smallest gun. Or maybe that's the other way around. I can never quite remember. You're a funny guy, Roy. Haven't I always you said what a funny game? guy Roy is? And how much fun it would be to get together with him sometime. Poor Johnny. He's the dark, sensitive type. He's a serviceman, too, Cole. Johnny was in Okinawa. You were in the crotch? Sixth Marines. The lieutenant who won the Silver Star upon Sugarloaf. I've heard of you. Something like that. All right, have we finished flirting? You got something to discuss, Roy? Or are you going to stand around beating the meat while my lunch gets cold? We have some questions. Do I need my lawyer? Man. <laughs> A <laughs> whole lot of testosterone thrown around in that conversation. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Roy is quick. God handed to him. As crass and as inhuman a, a human being he is, he's a witty guy at times. He can be witty, and uh, he's not afraid of anything. <clears throat> Except for Jack in the Box. Eric the Red says, why would he announce it to Earl by doing that in the middle of the day as opposed to just doing it after work, uh, after part of the case that you work, it doesn't make any sense. I agree. It's, it's so bizarre. He's, he, li he literally stops in the middle of his work day to wait until eat? evening so he's not doing anything between then and evening for Elsa to finish her gig think at the Blue Room. I think your bright spark might have blown a fuse, Roy. Hey, you still there, kid? Then tells her to her apartment to make the biggest mistake of his entire life. And he, pack, he practically tells Roy that he's doing it, too. It's so stupid. I don't get it. Then, the very next day, he picks up right where he left off. Oh, we're going to go talk to Mickey Cohen now. Has a place, says, hi, I just wanted to drop by and say hi. I won't be sticking around, though, as I don't want to spoil the episode for myself. Okay, probably a good idea. All right, Finkelstein's, or Finkelstein's drug operation. Lenny the Fink. Your brother-in-law, Lenny Finkelstein, was selling stolen morphine. He had one-third of the shipment. Old news, kid. I don't know anything about what Lenny was up to. Finally get to interview Mickey Cohen. So happy. Lion's Pride says, I hate that it's chosen for you. It's just so Would frustrating. Like I just like that, too, but then I have to remember that it's not supposed to be an RPG. At least I don't think so. It's supposed to be, you know, a detective interrogation game, so it's not like we're playing a role. We're not making the decisions. It's, it's Cole who's making the decisions. We're just his, his muscle. We're pushing him through. Um, I mean, we do make interview decisions and stuff like that, but it's not, a, it's not really an RPG, I don't think. I think your bright spark might have blown a fuse, Roy. Hey, you still there, kid? <laughs> Lion's Pride says you're forced into doing something that, in my opinion, feels totally out of character for Cole. I agree. It feels totally out of character for Cole, especially since this entire game is about him um, redeeming himself. This, this entire game is about personal redemption for Cole Phelps after what happened at Okinawa. And then he does something like this. Uh, Quibi Squared says, this is the first time seeing without a hat. Loving the mop head. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to bad cop this guy. So I'm supposed to believe that you don't know what happened to the rest of the shipment. Lenny, God rest his soul, was a moron. He was family, though, and I haven't made a beef about that, so count yourself lucky, kid. The H is a filthy habit, and I don't condone it. The simple solution would be to have all the dope fiends put down. So you don't know where he got the morphine. Kid. Ask a question you might get an answer to. All right. Um, let me scroll something down here real quick. Really? That's it? We just get two questions? All right. Okay. Next up, we will ask about the 111 club shooting incident. We believe there's a link between a group of Marines and the morphine stolen from the SS Coolridge. 
One of those Marines was shot to death in a club last night. I wouldn't know anything about that. And again, well, bad cop. Because we don't have proof he's lying, but, I mean, it's Mickey Cohen, so. He's a bad liar, too, this Mickey. Supposed to be this big mob boss. Look at him. Look at how scared he is. How is shifty eyed he is. He's a bad liar. Dan Geld says, again, maybe cut content explains why Cole acted out of character. Is there cut content that I'm unaware of? Is there like a DLC with cut content or something? Because if so, I don't have it. I didn't get it on Steam when I bought the game. I'll have to look into it. Sergeant Dornan says this game certainly had rough development cycle along the way. Um, that's why the studio who made it doesn't exist anymore. Blown a fuse, Roy. Hey, you still there, kid? Yeah, the uh, the the studio doesn't exist anymore. It uh, it did have a rough patch. Um, from ev everything I read, it had a lot to do with the guy who came up with the idea for this game. All right, um, <clears throat> we're gonna doubt his story. So you haven't heard anything about what happened at the 111 Club? What can I say, kid? I'm shocked that in the land of opportunity, Uncle Sam's finest feel the need to resort to crime. It's a dangerous business. I can attest to that. I'd recommend they get out of the life quickly. A few Negroes saying goodbye on the sidewalk will never make the papers, Mickey. But we had a judge in Pasadena say adios the other day. Prominent white people popping their clogs makes like everyone Mickey? nervous. You know dope has never been my thing, Roy. It's always been for Schmendricks like uh, Jack D and Jimmy Utley. But uh, I'll ask around and I'll get back to you. Hey, you boys want some lunch? How about a drink? We'll take a rain check on that. Come on, Cole, we're leaving. We have to cut that dope. It looks bad with people dying. We have to get the rest of it. There's no way of watering down the stuff in those little packages. We have to put the squeeze on those guys and get the rest of it. They don't seem to type the fright that easy. We'll see. Ooh, we're talking about Kelso and Courtney. Hey, what's going on? That fucking rat stoker has gone public about Brenda. Who is Brenda? Brenda is L.A.'s most famous madam. And everyone knows it? Of course everyone knows. Brenda pays her way. Are we cops or a collection agency? Whores have been around since the Bible. Our job is to keep it off the street so Joe Citizen and his wife can stroll around unmolested. Then we should change the law. Are you out of your mind? Every politician in America is against prostitution. Except when they're using them. So where does Stoker come in? He objects to the LAPD and the administration taking its cut. Is everyone in on this? Yeah, and that's the problem. From a little acorn does a large tree grow. He could bring the whole thing crashing down on us. Big Al said, wait, Roy said no to a drink? Yeah, now that seems out of character. Aren't you supposed to be working the... Sir, do you know which robbery detectives are working the army surplus theft from the Coolidge? Caldwell and McManus. I saw Caldwell in the squad room not long ago if you want to speak to him. Thank you, sir. We'll do that. This way. Harry, you got a minute? Sure, Cole, any time. You've been working the docks robbery on the SS Coolridge? Yeah, that's right. So how do you see it? Inside job. Either the guys working the wharves or some of the guys on the ship. What else was taken apart from the morphine? Case of BARs, case of Thompsons, crate of Valor smokes. Ooh. Homicide just recovered three BARs and a mountain of cigarettes at a shooting at the 111 Club. No kidding. I better get over there. Do you have a copy of the manifest? Yeah. Here it is. I say we bust in there and find so the So how do we connect the docks robbery to the mess at the 111 Club? I want to make homicide. I mean, you know you've made it if you got that desk. Okay, we've got names on the left-hand side. Inside. Boarded in Shanghai, yeah, China. Disembarked San Pedro, USA. Ship manifest of passengers. Oh, we and it's circled and for the us. Evidence. These are the items that are missing. We've got hey, Browning automatic back. rifle, Thompson submachine gun, Valor cigarettes, and the morphine tartrate. I say we bust in there and find the goddamn evidence. Enough to arm three companies. Pause a bit. For the narration. I, homicide. I mean, you know you've made it if you got that desk. Here's our backroom arsenal from the 111 Club. Yeah, the bum took a swipe at me. 
Put him down with my sap. This is the crate we recovered. Yeah, I'm thinking of moving up to a 45. I want to put him down one round. I want to make homicide. I mean, you know you've made it if you got that desk. Half a million Surrettes loose on the streets of L.A. Some of these guys are from my old unit. They must have finally shipped home. Kelso, Sheldon, McGoldrick. McGoldrick was on the boat? Sure, we checked him out. McGoldrick bought the 111 Club, Harry. His brains are all over the bar. Looks like whoever stole the dope is getting muscled. By whom? Dragner or Cohen. They control the hop. He's finally Detectives. putting it together. KGPL's going crazy. Shots fired at 1384 North Bronson. Some guy with an automatic spraying a Hollywood bus. They want every car. Go! Please don't make me drive. Please don't make me drive. Now, Roy, you drive. Off me at the grand jury. Case was thrown out. Now the DA wants my head. Exit. 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 No. Exit. Yes. You do the honors, Roy. You know the way. You can drive. Go to the bus shooting. What am I missing? The police station was across stop. have to drive but I will have to shoot Go to the trunk, he says. Oh, that's not working. Yeah, I better go to the trunk. <laughs> See if we can get something a little better than my little pea shooter there. How about that? No, 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 no. I'll take it. <laughs> what a mess. I dropped my gun. Oh, they didn't let me keep my submachine gun. What have we got here? Nice young man resorting to a life of crime. What are the youth coming to these days? Let's inspect his hands. <laughs> Big Allen says, you'd think after shooting every gun in the wasteland in the, Mo the Commonwealth in the Mojave, Oxhorn would be able to hit something. You'd think. You'd think. But hey, life is full of surprises.
Hello, what have we here? Phone number and restaurant table. Alvaro, Route 217, Hollywood and Sunset, between 12 and 2 p.m. That's the bus route. Macombo Tables, Mickey Cohen. Brave Microbe says, well, there is that time in traffic when Bukowski finds out Cole has a thing for blondes, but other than that, it's left to the player to assume that he was captivated by her. Yeah, but she's not a blonde. Elsa's a brunette. And remember, he was kind of forced into saying that he had a thing for blondes. Bukowski asks, and he's like, oh, I don't really care. And he's like, oh, come on, every man cares. Every man has a color. He's like, well, I guess blondes. All right, that's enough narration footage. Backing out. Cutscene. BARs. <clears throat> Jareth says, you shot him in the head and yet his torso is riddled with holes. I suppose those could have been from the other cops firing at him. Maybe mine was just the lethal one. Alvaro. He's one of the guys from the ship? His name was on the manifest. Looks like McGoldrick wasn't the only one to get a message. Hey, Alvaro. Hey, Lieutenant. He's just a plain detective now, Chico. Who's the jughead? That's my partner, Roy <laughs> Earl. We just want to find out what happened. What happened is that someone took a shot at my bus, and the cops turned up and started treating me like I'm some sort of pachuco punk. My people have been in California for over 300 years. Very fucking admirable, Felix. And he served. Man. <clears throat> All right. Uh, we'll first ask him about the Cool Ridge heist. How about that? You hear anything about the big heist on the Cool Ridge? Yeah, I heard about it. Oh. So what happened? Not much. Uh, the cops came and... Interview with me and all the other guys on the ship. Whoops. Did you see that? Oh, man. At least it happened at a moment where he was doing an um. Maybe I won't have to reshoot it then. He's not looking very persuasive, though. He's like, yeah, I heard about it. And now he's standing with his hands behind his back. Ooh. Body language. Wasaki Master says, Hey, Alexander, I'm about to start a new playthrough of New Vegas, and I'm looking for a suggestion for a character build. I'm thinking either a mid-to-long-range gun user or a shot-to-mid-range energy weapon user. Well, I, I can recommend uh, the guys over at Fudge Muppet. They do a lot of wonderful New Vegas builds. In fact, I used their New Vegas cowboy build you still there, Phelps? for my character. Has the light gone off? I tell you, if I were to do it all, all over again, I'd probably go with an energy weapon build because the energy weapons in Fallout New Vegas are amazing. They're just so much fun to play with. I remember going through Old World Blues and finding all these amazing energy weapons and thinking, man, I wish I was an energy weapon spec. I could make use of this. All right, anyway, we're going to doubt that he's telling us the truth. I was down at the 111 Club this morning waiting for the medical examiner to scrape Eddie McGoldrick's brains off the bar. You want to tell me anything about that? I heard that Eddie came into some money. Too bad he didn't keep a low profile. It was a tough break to get through Okinawa and then have to buy it back home. Smart guy. Almost sounds like if he were to get into some money, he might keep a low profile. A low profile like driving a bus. Hmm. Uh, Spookaloo says, greetings, Ox from Spokane. How's the Seattle area handing the bit of snow? Man, we're buried under. Just uh, It's been snowing all day out that window. I'm wrapped up because it's freezing cold. 
we're hunkered into this house. Thankfully, we still have power. But we went to the grocery store. We stocked up on canned goods and all sorts of stuff to make sure we get through this. I don't want to leave for three days. That's the thing. All right, let's ask him about his motive for the shooting. Who's shooting at you, Felix? How the fuck do I know? Well, we know that he's lying, but we'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> Dane Geld says Roy didn't like Cole that much. He wanted to get him into trouble. He didn't want him to get to her. That, and he was mad after seeing the boxing thing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he has an axe to grind for that. Him and all the other police officers in Vice, Aramore, are more corrupted than any of the witnesses that we've witnessed or that we've interviewed. Driving dialogue reveals Roy knew or even potentially was following Cole to all of his visits to Elsa's club. That if you catch a newspaper cut scene, you realize the big wigs of L.A. wanted to divert the attention from their own failures. No, that's entirely correct. In fact, I would say that the entire reason Roy handpicked Cole from Homicide was not because he's a good case belts? man. Has the light gone off? <clears throat> not just because he's a good case man, but because of his sort of reputation of being um, uncorruptible. He wanted an uncorruptible cop that he could corrupt because an uncorruptible person that suddenly becomes corrupt makes headlines. <clears throat> and that would distract from everything else going on in the department. It was purposeful from the very beginning. All right, uh, this guy's lying. The dead guy on the roof works for Mickey Cohen. Why would Cohen want you dead? Man, I don't know anything about Mickey Cohen or, or any of those gangsters. Well, okay, how do we tie this together? Because the evidence that he's lying is that, the sniper's pocketbook. All this does is tell us that he knew where the bus was going to be. He clearly got that information from Mickey Cohen because it's got Mickey's table written inside. So Mickey knew where his bus was going to be and wanted him dead. But that doesn't prove that this guy knew Mickey. All it proves is Mickey wanted him dead. But I guess that's the connection we're supposed to make. Your name was in the sniper's notebook. Level with me, Felix. Cohen thinks because we were on the boat, we have the morphine. Courtney's meeting those guys to sort it out. Courtney Sheldon? Yeah. You remember Sheldon, don't you, Cole? Oh, yeah. We'll be in touch, Felix. You heard that Jack is in L.A.? I saw his name on the manifest. He's been here a couple of months. Sure glad to see you got over your wound, Lieutenant. I mean, detective. Not a lot of respect, Pretty cool Helm. customer. He's been under fire before. You buying a story? Not for a minute. <clears throat> All right, well... Gamwell time. Gamwell time. Then Kelso's apartment. All right, where's the Gamwell? Nice day for it. Otto Von Grimm says, hello, Ox. Confused with no hat on. First time on Twitch. Phelps, badge 1247. On Twitch, I don't have the hat. On YouTube, I have How the hat. How can I help, detective? I need an address on a Jack Kelso. Just a second. Jack Kelso, apartment 4, 1408 North El Centro Avenue, Hollywood. Thanks for your help. Okay, um, Kelso's apartment. You drive, Roy. I don't want to deal with it. Let me you drive. I just want a quick look go over the case notes. Fine, where are we headed? Big Al says, why would Mickey want him dead if he didn't know him? I mean, yeah, that's a good point. How well did you know the owner? Goldrick? Well enough. He was in my unit. That's some cruel irony. 
You survive the war, then get blown to pieces back home. It happens more than you'd think. Young guys trying to adjust to normal life, getting mixed up in the wrong crowds. The kid had just bought a nightclub. I'd say he got mixed up in the right crowds. Until someone filled him full of holes. You don't come into that kind of money that quickly without pissing a few people off. Especially if you come out of that kind of money by selling a bunch of morphine. Otto von Grimm says, Don't get me wrong, you're still roughly handsome in a young Burl Ives sort of way. Thanks. Hello, Jack. <laughs> this is Detective Roy Earl. Hello, Cole. We would like a word. Would you like to come inside? Actually, we'd prefer if you'd come downtown with us. Do you mind? Do I have any choice? No. You don't. He Are says you with going a to smile. Tell me what this is all about? It would be better for all of us if we discussed it at the station. Bad move, Cole. How have you been, Jack? Cut the crap. Awkward. You pick me up in front of my apartment like a common criminal and then expect small talk? Fuck you. <laughs> okay. So there's still a grudge. There's still a grudge. What do we got? We got four questions back at Hollywood Station. We'll start with the army surplus morphine. Sergeant Dornan says, your partner seems like a bit of a psychopath. Yeah. Yeah, that's Roy. That's Roy. Do you know that there's a gang war going on in L.A. trying to recover that stolen morphine? That has nothing to do with me. It may not have had anything to do with him. But we know from the cutscenes. Oh, well, I haven't shown that cutscene yet. Okay. So we know from other cutscenes that he has been stepping in support of Courtney Sheldon to negotiate with Cohen. So he does have an inkling as to what's going on. So he's lying. But we don't have proof at this time because we can't use newspapers as proof. So we'll say doubt. Lions Pride says Roy is 100% incapable of empathy, as we learned in my last video. <laughs> but he's sitting there trying to comfort. You okay, Phelps? Standing around, doing nothing? You look shell shocked. Yeah, but he's seen that before. Ooh, that's some. That's a good tie-in right there. Anyway, he's sitting there trying to comfort the housekeeper who found the body of her employer, <laughs> and he's sitting there like, "There, there. It's okay." <laughs> He is a character. All right, we're going to doubt it. I'm sure it would be gripping to hear more of your life story, boys, but the truth is, I don't give a fuck. You were on the boat, Kelso. What happened? Do you really think a bunch of Marines could muscle in on the dope rackets in this town? Between the vice squad and the mob, I hear it's pretty sewn up. You better watch your mouth. <laughs> He's not wrong. And that's what made Roy mad. All right, next one is X Marine McGoldrick. Did you know that Eddie McGoldrick recently came into money and bought a nightclub? No, I didn't know that. Well, he knew that McGoldrick had money, but he may not have known that McGoldrick bought the nightclub. And we don't get anything from his behavior here that leads us to believe that he's lying. So will truth. Or good cop, this guy. Or this one. Sergeant Dornan says his straight-to-the-point attitude is pretty funny, though. Yeah. And he's not afraid to intimidate people. Which comes in interest. It makes for an interesting exchange between he and Cole. <clears throat> um, all right, let's wait for him to say his piece, then we'll... Truth. You okay, Phelps? Standing around, doing nothing? You look shell-shocked. Man, that's a low blow from Kelso. And you didn't know that some mobsters blew his brains out last night? No, I didn't. <laughs> now, 
Now that he knows a bit more about what we're dealing with, we can ask him the big question. Or one of the big questions, did he know about the arms stolen from the Cool Ridge? You heard that a crate of VARs went missing? No, I didn't. Happy Cow says, Oxhorn, hey, I was just wondering, or watching your YouTube videos and was lucky enough to catch you live. Well, thanks for watching. Glad you made it to uh, over here to Twitch. I normally stream on YouTube, but every now and then when I'm capturing footage, I figure I'll bring you guys along. And uh, I'm preparing for next week's worth of content, so here we are. Lion's Pride, I would read your comment, but spoilers, we'll get to that. Big Al says, wow, that tie and that sports coat, not sure what's louder. Well, it's got a nice hound's tooth sports coat going on. You okay, Phelps? Standing around, doing nothing? But I agree. Looks shell-shocked. That tie is indeed loud. What is that supposed to be? But fitting for the time. 1947, about to move into the 50s. The 50s was all about loud ties. I saw Felix Alvaro today. Good. How was he? A little pale. One of Mickey Cohen's goons had emptied about 60 BAR rounds into the bus he was driving. A public bus in the middle of Hollywood. Are you going to tell me what's going on? Or do more innocent people have to die? Yeah, and what's in it for you, Cole? Newspapers? More glory? Another promotion? Another medal at the expense of men who fought for their country? Count me out. <laughs> wow, he's really bitter about that. But then again, Cole is not very proud of his time in the Marines, which is why he never wants to talk about it. And he's uncomfortable whenever anyone mentions the, the silver medal he, he won. All right, now we'll talk about the SS Cool Ridge. What do you know about the Army surplus robbery from the Cool Ridge, Jack? What I know is that on three separate occasions, you would have been dead if it weren't for me. I don't know anything about the robbery. He is true about, or he's telling the truth about the three separate occasions, but <clears throat> he's lying here. And that was a classic move. Tell Cole why Cole owes Kelso, then lie to, K to Cole's face. But he's clearly getting nervous. Look at this. He's sweating and gulping, maintaining eye contact. But look how nervously he's doing it. Every part of his body is moving except his eyes. Laura says, is it terrible that I actually like the clothing styles from back then? Pics of my grandparents are the best. No, that's not terrible. They had style. They really did. They knew how to dress. Of course, I'm glad we don't have to dress like they did back then. You okay, Phelps? <laughs> Standing around, doing nothing. Only look shell shocked. That it's a lot of work. Imagine your morning routine if every day you had to put as much work into your appearance as these guys do. Pressed, uh, pressed pants, new tie, the hat, the hair, everything. All right, we're gonna doubt this guy's story. People are dying because morphine intended to help servicemen is being used on the street. Now we have guys from our old unit being killed by mobsters. We can put two and two together, Jack. Gratitude isn't a concept that has much effect on you, is it, Cole? Answer the question, Jack. Let's get this over with. I was interviewed when the robbery took place. I don't have anything further to add. Jack, we just want information. Bullshit, Cole. Did you seriously believe that dragging me down here would get me to give up my own guys? You call yourself a Marine? Trying to make a name for yourself with this shit heel? Look at this chump. This two hundred dollar suit and two thousand dollar car. <laughs> the tough guy act is really impressive. I like you, Jack. I'd like to make you for this. I really would. I'm going to be working on it and keeping an eye on you. You can go now. Shooting Robert Steiner, sixty-seven eighty West Sunset Boulevard. The victim is a Chris Majowski. Another name from the manifest. You drive. How many more friends of yours are gonna get plugged today? I guess I should have waited. It's 
Talk about tension. That was like being trapped in an elevator with a married couple who can't decide whether they love each other or hate each other. We ah. go back a long way. You went too easy on him. Next time, you leave it to me. I know how to handle that smug son of a bitch. You don't. Jack will never give up his own myth. He just walked up and shot the man. Two of them officers, they went that way. Go on, get after him. Oh, no, magically I'm behind the wheel. He would never get involved in something like this. We brace him and drag him downtown. Work. He's a tough customer. I can't take the shot from here, Cole. Getting close and steer him off the tar. Working on it, Roy. I can't hit a target that isn't there, Phelps. Hit him. Clear this asshole off the road. Let's see how fast he runs on bare rims. Can't get beside him. What do you want me to do? Step on it, huh? Just give me a little closer. <laughs> okay. Working on it. No good. We need to get closer. Shut up, Roy. You're not helping. the car. Sorry. My bad. Got a lock. That's, that's a lot to do. Nope. Here we go. My bad. Sorry. Hold on. Move it around. There we go. I didn't kill anybody except for those two guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sergeant Dornan says 1010 would let Ox drive again. Wait a minute, I've seen this guy before. They're reusing a face on this corpse. We, uh, <laughs> uh he, this was Carlos, the, the guy from uh, the pressing when they were putting Reefer Madness from the Reefer Madness case. Oh, I did not choose that arm. I did not choose that arm. Face. Thank you. No, I didn't choose that arm. Come on, put that arm down. Jacket pocket. Jacket pocket, please. Please, jacket pocket. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, a hit list. Post office, post office, Chinese theater. An LAPD file. We have a traitor in our midst. All of the names on the list have a hit team assigned to them. I remember that, but I don't remember the connection. So we've got a Michael Driscoll, a Walter Beckett, a John Higgins, and a Patrick Conley. Interesting that they didn't circle Courtney Sheldon or Jack Kelso, the only two who threatened Cohen in an alleyway. Oh, but this was a different hit team. That's right, because Felix Alvaro is encircled here, but we found the other guy who was going for him, which means Courtney and Jack could be on their hit list. All right, let's check the other pocket, see what we got.
Cohen is meeting with Sheldon tonight. Big Al says, Co a logic would dictate that coal would be the better choice to shoot out tires. <clears throat> if only. I'd much rather uh, that job. We need to get to those guys fast. Otherwise, there'll be no case. Thanks, Roy. Let's inspect this other corpse. Oh, hello. Yes, newspaper. LAPD vice scandal could go all the way to the top. Mayor, district attorney declined to comment. Stoker tell-all may cost jobs at City Hall. We have to look at damage limitation. We can't allow that strumpet Brent Allen to bring down the whole administration. We've got to put a lid on the press. Can't someone talk to Harry over at the Times? It's too late. The Times would look ridiculous if we dropped the story now. Who is this Stoker? Stoker's a lily white. Nothing that will fix this in the short term. My law and order credentials are disappearing as we speak. Can we get Brenda to leave town? Yes, we can, but she won't go quietly. Brenda has extensive records. Can she at least lay low? That's already been taken care of. Mayor? All of this over a prostitute? District Attorney. Who is this guy? And what does he want, Horrell? The name's Roy Earl. Detective. Administrative Vice. Aren't you one of the clowns that got us into this mess? Oh, I think that the orders regarding Brenda come down, not up, Mayor. I have a human interest story. It involves a certain LAPD cop, a hero from the war, who has let his beautiful wife and kids down, who has betrayed America for a German junkie whore, who has abandoned his pledge to the LAPD and his commitment to the public we all serve. Could be all over the papers by tomorrow, and you would be off the hook. So what do you want in return, Roy? Fingering a fellow officer. Oh, Roy. Oh, Roy. That is why Roy is Roy the Snick. Oh, well, I have a feeling I'll be narrating over this particular newspaper for a bit as I vent my anger during the lore video. So I'm going to take this opportunity to get a new cigar and light it up. Enjoy the paper while I think of things to say about Roy. Laura says, please do, Ox. <clears throat> Roy deserves every seething second of your ire. I agree. He does. And at the same time, he's not wrong. Cole cheated on his wife. His wife, with whom he has two beautiful children. He cheated on her. With a lounge singer. What Roy is doing is despicable. And I don't necessarily think that Cole's dirty laundry needs to be front page of the Los Angeles Inquisitor. But what Cole did, what Cole did, and what we had no control over, is despicable. It's really despicable. Cole, our hero. All right, let's go explore this other body. 
I remember when I saw this the first time, I just stared at Roy. Because you and I know what Roy has done, but Cole does not know what Roy has done. There's nothing we can do about it right now. Oh, I can't inspect this one. I can just stand on his uh, belly. Okay. Just walk over him. Oh, I was so steamed when I read about this. When I saw that cutscene, I just wanted Roy's blood. His head on a plate. Okay. <clears throat> so, we, we have a list of different places. We know where they're going to hit next. They, what, what was circled? There was the Chinese restaurant. No, it was a Chinese theater and a post office. Let's try to intercept these clowns before they do more. You know the way. You can drive. Chinese theater. All right, where to? You can drive, Roy, partner. Captain says, and the car is magically fixed. <laughs> well, I didn't hurt it that bad. Just, you know, it's just scratches. Just scratches. They're taking out all the guys from the ship. Why? How does that get them the dough? They obviously don't know who has the morphine. They're waiting for someone to crack. Lion's Pride says he isn't wrong, but he doesn't expose Cole for the good of the public. He does it for his own interests, to, ex to protect himself. He does what might be right, but for all the wrong reasons. Another car chase? Getting oh. close and steer him off the tar. Yeah. Working on it. Where'd he go? Oh, he went left. Gotta have to redo this one. Let's try this again. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> as soon as we get there, we get in, a, in another car chase. All right. <laughs> Chris says, we just got that car fixed. I know. I know now. Here we go. Getting close and steer him off the tar. Oh, come on! The dog guy's doing it with a dog guy. Ah, oh, come on! Yes, yeah, the dog guy's Ah! You know, it's bad. The next time I feel like this, they're going to say, you want to skip all of the action sequences? That's when you know you're doing something wrong. <laughs> Getting close and steer them off the tar. I can't hit a target that isn't there, Phelps. Hit him. Oh, hit for Pete's sake! Getting close and steer him off the tar. I'll try for the tires. Keep your foot down.
Wait, I thought I heard knocking on my door. Hold on. That's the guy from the paper. Solved that big case. That's the guy. I heard he's an honest cop. Now there's an oxymoron for you. I don't need this. You lousy bastard. You drove me up to Mall Holland, and we did some necking. Cole, we got things to do. Hey, Cole, let's get moving. Isn't that the cop who solved the big case and got promoted? All right, we're all still here? Sorry about that, that was my daughter. I think I may have been a bit loud. She knew I was awake. And she wanted to sit in here and watch. For? But uh, it's bedtime. She wants a five-star goddamn wedding. You're behind the wheel. Where are we going? Nice robe. <clears throat> Thank you. It's a gift for my wife. I'll have to be a bit more quiet.
<laughs> in the middle of a gunfight. Yeah, let's just do that. Messy, messy, I'll give you that, messy, but it worked. <laughs> he just drops the gun. Holy cow. Okay, what do we got here? <coughs> oh, no, oh. Tell Courtney. Bad luck. Where they're trying. God. Whoa. <laughs> I forgot that. Oh. <clears throat> uh, let's check the arm. Polar Bear Ice Company. Really did it. Wonder whether it was worth it. Most people never get the chance to be rich. Wouldn't you risk it? Well, this is proof that the Sixth Marines on the Cool Ridge stole the guns, the cigarettes, and the morphine and sold it to Lenny Finkelstein. I mean, this card is in his pocket that directly connects them. <laughs> Napoleon Wars <laughs> Napoleon Wars says excuse me while I touch your head I know you're not dead yet but I'm looking for signs of a murder on your face just hold still you'll hold still soon enough don't worry about it see you soon <laughs> that was creepy ah. <laughs> that was creepy all right, let's see, check the jacket pockets. I can't check this jacket pocket. It's a zip up. <clears throat> Captain says, where was Cole when the rest of the sixth was robbing the ship? They came in on it. He came in on a different ship. <sighs> Nasty. <clears throat> Ooh, by the P.O. boxes. Oh, he just steps right over him. Okay. You hear the sound effect that neck is making? <clears throat> Yuck. Sheldon is bringing his own fire team with him. 
<clears throat> Meeting with Cohen and Sheldon, 1640 North Las Palmas, later tonight. Oh, dear. <clears throat> technician, subscribe to Twitch Prime. Thank you, Technician. Juice, Beckett, Goldrick, Driscoll. These are good guys. Why did they get wrapped up in this thing? All because Courtney Sheldon decided it was a good idea. Not everyone has your unwavering restraint in the face of temptation, Cole. Oh, this is going to be a long video. I can see it already. Another hour and 20 minute or... Well, let's Beautiful get on day. a... Hope we have no trouble. Yeah, after this, yeah. Can you drive to this one? Fine, where are we headed? Mickey Cohen's. This isn't looking good. I feel like the fat kid at the back of a race. You sure it's Cohen making the hits? All fingers point his way. Your buddies are in way over their heads. The tires are Being out. a Marine doesn't mean shit out here. <laughs> Sparks flying from the car as we pull away. There goes Cohen. All right, let's kill these red bastards. Keep moving, I'll cover you. I got it. Roy got one. I'm gonna put out an APB on every one of the sons of bitches on that. APB on the car 11K, car 11K, come in. Car 11 King. Car 11 King, come in. Car 11 King. 11 K, go to Hollywood Station. Hey, Courtney Sheldon is at Hollywood Station requesting Finally. an interview with Detective Cole Phelps. Well, I'll be damned. Finally. That's not correct protocol, 11 K. I'll take that as a roger. Car 11 King en route. They correct him. <laughs> you drive. <clears throat> go over the case notes. So this is why Hollywood Police Station was not crossed out. We got to interview Courtney Sheldon. Listen to my car. Doesn't sound good. Roy, in my office, if you please. I'm working a major case. I'm that close, Cap. It's going to have to wait. Let Phelps do the interrogation. But, Cap, no buts. This is more important. Ooh. I knew it wasn't safe around here anymore. I remember. He ran the light on Olympic, and we finally collared him on Temple. Fontaine is there? Well, what do you know? Sheldon and Fontaine. Sheldon, is this your attorney? No, detective. This is Dr. Harlan Fontaine. He came down here to help me out. How do you do, sir? You stole the morphine from the Coolridge. You can't prove that. 
Let's see if I can try. And what is your relationship to Sheldon, sir? Tudor mentor. Mr. Sheldon is a medical student of mine. He has a very bright future. Oh, that's nice to know. Too bad all of your war buddies won't get to see your graduation. <sighs> Man, of all of the cops' bosses that I respected, it was the homicide boss. I mean, there was there was enough about him that I didn't like. He had he had his rough edges. He sided with Galloway on too many occasions, but I still liked him. To see him disappointed is rough. But we'll get to that. Let's ask him about the sixth Marines being targeted. I would have asked Beckett or Majewski or Driscoll about their involvement, but that's difficult considering they're all dead. That leaves you, Sheldon. You can't blame their deaths on me, Phelps. Just got a text. Hold on. So my mom wanted to know how we're dealing with the snow, making sure we're all toasty warm. I'm 37 years old. My mom still texts me when it's a snowstorm. I love it. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Let's wait for him to give his piece. That is to say his little side comment. Then we'll continue. Lion's Pride says, really, I thought Donnelly was a crook. I did like his personality. Personally, I really liked the traffic. Stare all you want. I have nothing to hide. I liked traffic as well. Donnelly, Donnelly was like Galloway. He, wa he was lazy. He wanted to just get the numbers done. He didn't care if the people were innocent or not. He wanted a conviction. And that is a bit crooked. But I did like his personality a lot. Okay. Um, we have all the evidence we need, as Cole said at the beginning. So we're going to accuse him of lying. You're lying, Courtney. The other guys aren't smart enough to attempt something like this. You either give it up, or I go after Jack for it. And how do you prove that, Cole? Isn't there anything else you can do? <clears throat> we have two options. <clears throat> we can um, <clears throat> we can use the shooter's notebook which mentions Sheldon or we can use the note which also mentions Sheldon plenty plenty of evidence stare all you want I have nothing to hide we know about your showdown with Cohen we found notes on your guys. Cohen is hitting our old dude. He believes we have the morphine. I told him that we don't have it. And that's the truth. Isn't it, Doc? I believe, Mr. Sheldon. I think he's telling the truth, Detective. We know from a newspaper cutscene that he is telling the truth. But Cole doesn't know that. Interesting choice of words that... Um, the doc used. He says, I believe Sheldon is telling the truth. Sheldon almost gave it away by kind of leaning on the doctor to say, oh yeah, I took the morphine. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> but the uh, doctor was smart enough not to go that way. Let's ask about the SS Cool Ridge robbery. You were on the ship, Sheldon. Yes, that's correct. So you had opportunity. But it doesn't mean that I was involved fish out of water this guy way out of his depth here <clears throat> alright well he is lying and the evidence we have is the confession we got off of Beckett because he apologized to no one he apologized to uh, no one but Courtney giving us the impression that Courtney was the one who put it together I'm 
Laura says, I'm sure if I were 75 and my mom 100, she's still mother Stare me. Stare all you want. I don't I always mind it. I have nothing to hide. <laughs> yeah, as you get older, you begin to appreciate it a bit more, especially after you become a parent yourself. All right, that was his side comment. Let's accuse him of lying. So you don't mind that the mob executed McGoldrick, Driscoll, and Beckett to get to you? I don't know why you're trying to pin this on me. Where's your proof? The proof we have is a testimony by Beckett. Beckett's confession. Murdered Marine Walter Beckett. Tell Courtney, bad luck, it was worth a try. For everything that Cole did at Okinawa, <clears throat> and he did a lot that was not so good. Courtney tried to maintain the high ground at Japan, but he, look at what he did when he got back. All these Marines, his blood is on his hands. Beckett had a message for you before he died. Bad luck. It was worth a try. I feel bad about Beckett, Phelps. He was a hard charger. Those guys deserve more. I don't blame them for taking their shot. Have you finished, detective? No. I'm just getting started. You have an answer for everything, Courtney. Let's hope Jack does, because now I'm going after him. Is there anyone you're not prepared to sacrifice? Jack is not in this. He's a good guy. You were Jack, Courtney. I don't care who goes to jail. I just want the morphine off the street. What are you offering, Cole? Don't be ridiculous, son. This man is gambling. What's your offer? Doctor, good to see you. I'm conducting an investigation. Upstairs in my office. This now. man is about to confess. As of now, you're suspended from duty pending a fitness review. What are you talking about? You heard the man, Phelps. Upstairs and face the music like the hero you wear. Prepare to have your hearts broken, ladies and gentlemen. This is the worst part of the game. Al almost the worst part of the game. You certainly had us fooled, Detective. Phelps, you're one of my favorite sons. You've broken this old man's heart. Sir, what is going on here? You're suspended, Phelps. And over your badge and gun. Don't keep him waiting. What is going on here? Your wife's attorney has pictures of you and the German. Compromising pictures. She's pressing charges. You'll be formally charged with adultery. A criminal cannot serve as an LAPD officer, as I'm sure you're aware. I don't understand. How could you do it, lad? Your wife, your children, consorting with the enemy and a dope fiend at that. You're lucky the war is over. You'd be taken out and shot. The department doesn't need this kind of publicity, Phelps. Hand over the gun. Keep your head down until your board hearing. I forbid you to make any comments to the press. What the hell were you thinking? I mean, that's my question. It's completely out of character. <sighs> and then there's this. Marie, listen, Marie, I need to explain. Please leave, you're upsetting the girls. Let me see them, Marie. They're my daughters. Go to her, Cole. You have done enough damage here. Do you want me to call the police? For God's sake, Marie. Can't we at least talk? What is there to talk about? Do you love her? Do you? Say no. Say no. What were you thinking? What about our children? Can you imagine what this has been like for them? Go away, Cole. My father has hired an attorney, and you will be hearing from him. I'd like to explain, Marie. I'd like to tell you what I've been going through. What you've been going through. I have had reporters camped out on the front lawn all morning. I can't stand it, Cole. <laughs> I forgot about that.
I've got an idea that I'm toying around. I need to bounce it off you. <sighs> Let's... <laughs> Vehicle damage, 300, okay. Injuries, 50. City damage, 281, all right. Demoted to the arson desk. <clears throat> All right, here's my idea. I'm thinking of filming the rest of the city, the arson desk, in black and white. Uh, when you play this game, you have an option to either play in color or play in black and white. I wanted to play in color at the beginning so that we get the beautiful colors of this game. But I'm thinking that now that this turn has happened, he made this horrible choice. His career has been shattered. His marriage has been shattered. Now everything is in black and white. But I wonder if people are going to be upset about that because I know they like the color too. So bouncing it off of you guys. What you think? All right, let me, let me uh, shoot some pickup footage of just driving. Then it's the arson desk. Let's go to Vice, Streets of LA. Color, color. Black and white, black and white. Police entry in a citizen report suspicious activity on a trolley car on Fountain Avenue. Stand by for further information. Any central unit. Car 11 King, go ahead with the further. 11K, see the woman. A 288 just occurred on the Angelino Heights trolley. Currently stopped near Fountain and Bronson. Call in for further information. 11K. LAPD, ma'am. Are you all right? That low life. That filthy lowlife. What happened? I was standing ready to get off and I heard a click. His camera. That pervert took a picture of my... <clears throat> up my... Which way did he go? There! <laughs> That's what? him! Right there! Oh my god! Oh, fuck. Oh, what the heck? I didn't know this was gonna happen. Go on, Phelps, Ooh, get after that creeper. We're some CPU. There we go. asshole off the road. That didn't work. Come on. I, no. No, wrong way. Black and white, black and white, black and white. LAPD, ma'am. Are you all right? That lowlife! That filthy lowlife! What happened? I was standing ready Ryan's to get Ryan's pride said, start off in black and white and slowly add the colors back. His camera. That pervert took a picture of my... <clears throat> up my... Which way did Rainbow he go? says color might be better. There! That's him! Right there! Ah, uh, 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 uh. oh, fuck. What kind of shot did he think he would get with that? The camera is chasing around the skirt. It's ridiculous. Go on, Phelps. Get after that creeper. Got to get in the car first, Roy.
Yeah, I missed it, ha! Huh? Getting close and steer him off the tar. Hit him! Clear this asshole off the road. Hit him, Cole. Spin him out. Working on it. No! What is he taking me down a cobblestone street for? <laughs> oh. Garbage truck. Oh, why is this car faster than mine? Show me your hands. You're under arrest for public indecency. Oh, Christ. That's why, says the captain. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I see it now. I was too slow. Sunflower Field GameCube says, guys, that's the murdered woman Deirdre. Yeah, they reuse a lot of faces for some of the random um, traffic cases that you can find. Officers need help, Hollywood and Highland. Hollywood and Highland officers need help. 211 in progress and shots fired. Unit to handle code 3, identify. What are you doing? What have we got? Three guys tried to knock the place over and got jumped. Now they got a half dozen patrons and staff for insurance. Do we know the situation inside? Two inside covering the hostages, plus this charmer at the front door. We need to do something about him now, sir. He won't okay. negotiate, and he'll kill this poor bastard if we don't put him down. You come any closer, I'll pull. Ah! Move her up! There we go. Car 11K, code four at Hollywood First National Bank, corner of Hollywood and Highland. Suspects are down. I need an ambulance and notify the coroner. Roger on the ambulance, 11K. All units be advised, suspects are down at Hollywood First National at the corner of Hollywood and Highland. Great. I think we have enough pickup footage. Let me stop that one. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, trying to figure out what to do next. I've got a few hours before I need to hit the sack. And I could work on Fallout 2. 
Let me decide what I want to do. All right, I'm going to find my character build, make sure that it's up, and then let's go to the next one. <clears throat> so I was at Broken Hills. Now I need to go to Reading, I think. Broken Hills. Finish there. We could go to New Reno. But we'll go to Reading. Okay, <clears throat> it's been a few weeks since I've played Fallout 2. I was so consumed with some of my other content. Let's uh, grab the launcher. Problem is this is once I go live, or I won't be able to alt tab. That's okay. Okay, Broken Hills, let's go to Reading. Whoops, I need to change, don't I? Okay. <clears throat> One second, I need to make sure that I change on Twitch the game I'm playing so that people don't get confused. And I can't do that once Fallout 2 is active because for some reason it freaks out on me when I try to alt-tab. So let's go to live and change this to Fallout 2. Update information. Play the game. Okay.
Redding we go. Car out of power. What does it mean, car out of power? How do I, how do I refuel my, my car power? I don't want to have to walk all the way to Reading. Oh dear. Chris says it means your car is out of power. Uh, yeah, got that. Whoa, what gun did I give to Cassidy? I might have to take that back before something ha bad happens. Big Al says, oh great, Ox wrecked a car from the future. Use microfusion cells on the car to refuel. Wow, Cassidy is tearing it up. Fusion cells should work on refueling it, is that right? All right, I'll look into it. Where's Sulik? Did Cass accidentally kill Sulik? Where is Sulik? Okay, they're all all right. Oh, I forgot to go get Marcus. Ooh, and what did he have? An H and K cause. What did he have? A pan car jackhammer? Sweet. He had a flamer, wow. Right. Um If I remember correctly, that's the best shotgun in the game, says Emperor Psycho. Yeah. 
And I still can't carry the flamer. Man, that must be a heavy thing. All right. Rope is heavy. I'll give him some of my rope. There we go. Is that it? <laughs> All right, I think that's it. What you be needing? Right, well, uh, okay, I gotta refuel my car. And I need to get Marcus. Oh! Mobster? Yakuza? Well... Are they attacking me? No? Let's let them work it out. Yikes. Okay, uh, still wait it out. They're busy. I don't want to interrupt. Sound effects are great. Okay, as long as they're not attacking, I'll just, um... Alright. Well, mobster. You see a mobster. Simple travelers, eh? Ain't no such thing. You need help with any of your valuables? No, I'm okay with my valuables, thanks. Wow. He had a, uh... A wakizashi blade. And it's too heavy. I don't know how rare this encounter is. I'll take all the money. I guess I'll give Sulik my flamer. So I can pick up these Wazikashi blades. Oh, he had a sniper rifle. Man, hitting the jackpot here. Okay, let's save this. I don't want to lose all that. Let's save it as Redding. And let's attack. And I missed.
He looks, he looks, he looks very angry. No, 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 don't hit Sulek. Mobster killed. He picks up some throwing knives, okay. <clears throat> Got him. He picks up throwing knives. Oh dear. And he missed. And he missed. Great. Cass is amazing. I love Cass. What do we got on our mobster here? A Tommy gun. And another sniper rifle. I could make Vic deadly with that. I'm running out of room though. Man, all this money I'm throwing away because I can't loot. I can't carry everything. Vic, carry some more stuff for me. Tommy gun. Sniper rifle. The Wakuzas or whatever they're called. Sniper rifle. Sniper rifle. Okay, let's explore some of these shacks. Jet. The jet will make you jittery. Right, let's save that. So those were some very uh, lucrative random encounters we got. A mobster in the middle of the desert with a Tommy gun of all things. Okay, back to the car. Please tell me I have microfusion cells. Yes. You charge the car with more power. Great. All right, while we're here, let's unload Vic. Actually, I can't do that until I unload myself first. So let's unload myself 
Does the trunk have a carrying capacity? I sure hope not. Note from Francis, I think that's a quest item. I'll probably need that. 23 stim packs. I think I'm okay. All right, now, Vic, give me your possessions because I'm going to send you home. Fallout 2 seems like such a slow-paced game. Yeah, it's an old-school RPG. So it's going to be more slow-paced. All right, Vic. Now, can I unequip the armor that he's wearing? He's got a hunting rifle and leather armor. I guess I can't take it off of him. All right, let's hop in the car, go back to Broken Hills and get Marcus. All right, Vic. Sorry, but you got to go. <laughs> Ooh, and I'm getting a lot of lag here for some reason. Oh, that's how I take it off of him. How do I dismiss him as a companion? What is with this frame rate? What is going on? Oh, I forgot to take it off him. <clears throat> I need you to wait here until I come back. I need to talk about your gear. We need to change our distance. I need to ask you something. Where's your friend Ed again? Um... We need to change distance. Okay, no. You can leave him only at one place, says Settled Fungus. Where I found him? Modoc? What about Sulik? Can I get rid of him? What you be needing? Wait here, about your gear, distance, heal yourself, consult the spirits for me. Spirits be willing to talk. What you want? The ground glows with the light, not of the spirits. What you be needing? Spirits be willing to talk. What you want? Those that stand in front, backstab. 
what you be needing. <clears throat> Settled fungus says, I mean, you can't dismiss. But I want Marcus. How do I? You can only dismiss them where you found them. Okay. Then I guess we're going back to Modoc to get rid of um, Vic. And man, I'm getting low FPS. I don't know why. Let's just run out of here. Doggone it. <laughs> Google is your friend, Ox. Yeah, but I can't Google right now. No, I suppose I could. Huh? All right, let me see. Okay, so it, it is just telling them to wait. That's it. Just tell them, tell them to wait. Okay, where's Broken Hills on here? No. Sumiok Lab says, I've, Oxford, I've watched a ton of your YouTube videos for tips and tricks for Fallout 4. Really appreciate your hard work, and it's good to finally catch you live. Well, thank you, Sumiok Labs. I won't be streaming for much longer, <clears throat> but I'm glad to have you here. All right, now that we've left Vic, let's see if we can go get Marcus. Something else you wanted? Uh, there's too much going on right now. When things calm down... What? Then I just might. All right, I have completed all of the quests in Broken Hill. I don't know why.
Oh, did I not fix the mine's air purifier? I didn't. Let's do that. frame rate hit and I don't know why well I should have kept Vic for this because he has high repair skill And of course, there's a death claw. Great. I could have sworn I did this. All right, well, let's head up to this air purifier and let's see if we can get that fixed <clears throat> or the water purifier. And then maybe uh, we'll try to get Marcus as a companion and then call it a night. Captain says, uh, yeah, I remember you doing this last stream. Yeah, I thought I did it last stream. Maybe I didn't save. Oh, no, I remember I did the bad path. I blew it up and I forgot to record the good path. Oops. You're going to die there soon if you don't have a gas mask. I don't have a gas mask, so I better take some stim packs, huh? Vic is down, by the way. No, I left Vic. I didn't bring him with me. I left him at Modoc. Should have brought him with me. He would have been able to fix this. Oh, dear. And I don't have a tool with me, do I? Well, we may just have to do this another time.
Yep, I can't repair it. Alright, we're gonna do this another time. I got some good gear from those two random encounters, though, so... There is always that. Well, thank you for joining me for this impromptu stream. I had a great time uh, with L.A. Noir. I hope you guys did too. Got a new Fallout 3 lore video already done and uploaded and ready for tomorrow. So you should enjoy it tomorrow morning, hopefully, if you uh, want to check it out. And then I'll be doing some more Fallout 3, full story on Fallout 3 videos next week, as well, of course, as the L.A. Noir video and some more Fallout 76 videos. And when I get enough of my Fallout 2 footage shot, I'll dive right in to the full story of Fallout 2. But I want to make sure that I really understand the story and that my character has done everything in every location first, or as many of them as possible before I delve into that story. So <clears throat> that's the plan. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you later.